are you planning to move to Australia and get a PR? Wanna know a secret? Here's a reality. They don't want you. Hello guys, I am Akanksha. This is Cloak Rolling Heels and in today's video, I am going to tell you about seven cruel and harsh on-ground realities that come with getting a permanent residency in Australia. I've been living here from the last five years and these are some things that no one told me about. No one tells you about these things. You experience them or someone very close by who has experienced them may be telling you about it, but anyone else? No, nope, they don't tell you. But I have taken this task and I'm going to share these personal experiences that I think everyone should know when they are moving to Australia to get a PR and no one tells you. I swear, these are things that I wish I would have known. It would have made life so much easier, but here I am. And don't worry, I'm not changing my niche. I will still be making travel videos like normal and I will still be sharing all the travel updates travel vlogs like I usually do these are some videos that I decided to make because I wanted you all to know more about me my life in Australia what I have faced what are my experiences and learn from it uh, I just want you to know a little more about me share my life updates because I think if I share so much about myself on Instagram and YouTube I should share this part of my life too which I have not shared anywhere else and it's going to be a long video so hang in there hang tight um, and apart from that I will also tell you some tips and tricks that can make your life easier and if you're wanting to get a PR in Australia these tips will help you it's at the end of the video <laughs> so you have to hang in till the end to listen to these tips but before that do listen to these seven realities as well because this is actually some mistakes I made some things I didn't know, some things I learned from those mistakes and I think everyone should know about it. I'm truly, truly happy to share these th things. But someone's fire alarm went off. But I'm really happy to share these things because I want you all to know what I have faced and I don't want you to face all of these things. But first, a disclaimer. I'm not an immigration consultant. This is not an immigration consultancy uh, YouTube channel, but this is my travel channel. Um, I, I'm going to give you my life update. This is my personal experience that I'm going to share with you. This is not uh, immigration advice. Do your own research, uh, learn from other videos. This is something that I faced and I'm sharing with you. So you can learn from it, take some tips, but this is not an immigration video. Okay, now time for the video, let's go. Australian permanent residency is a very complicated process. There are a few different types of visas that you can apply for. Uh, but to be eligible for PR, you have to nominate an occupation which is in the skilled occupation list of a particular visa. But guess what? Even though you are eligible for an occupation in the occupation list, there is no guarantee that the occupation will stay in the list by the time your application is ready to be lodged. Australian immigration add or remove application occupations as per their wish and without any prior notification. If your occupation gets out of the list, there is no guarantee it will come back. It happened with me when I came to Australia, my occupation uh, after I, I was supposed to finish masters, which was like two years from the day I came in, uh, was intelligence officer or policy analyst or like there were a few different occupations in the list. Uh, in 2017, they removed those occupations, all of those occupations, and it has not come back yet. I'm still hanging in there, waiting for the occupation to come back, and I'm not eligible for PR, basically. Uh, and if that is not all, the points the people are getting invitation are so high, it sometimes feels like, an, like a math exam, where you cannot score 90 no matter how much you try. Like the scores have gone so, so, so high. I mean, people are getting 90 points, 95 points, 100 points, 105 points. Like the last, this is the last um, uh, 190 invitation round. And look at the scores, look at the points people have gotten their invitation in. This is unachievable. This is insane. I mean, it's just 
so annoying like you try and try and then the points keep on go going higher and it's just frustrating when you can't reach those things those points okay about studies there are certain education consultants and agents who sell you the study pathway so they tell you uh you study accounting you study engineering you study it you study uh, medicine or whatever or or become a nurse or social work these are the famous ones okay and as soon as you finish your studies you will get your pr like pr it is in your hands that's what i was told that pr will be in your hands and uh you will you'll be like sorted for life that's all you have to study and they give out prs like that <laughs> but let me tell you that is not the case and if someone gives you this advice you know what you have to do throw it in the dustbin it doesn't happen like that anymore a lot of courses that are sold to students as a pathway to pr like hr mba engineering it accounting are either not on the list or have points so high that it's unachievable you will be stuck in the pool forever and don't even get me started on the topic of migration agents or immigration consultants or whatever you want to call them uh there are two kinds there are migration agents and immigration lawyers i'm not talking about immigration lawyers i'm talking about migration agents because half the time they don't know what they're doing or they know what they're doing and they just don't care about you or your future most of the agents that are sitting there in their little offices are just there to take your money and this is my experience from tons of agents like tons of people told me tons of different stuff just to sell their products i mean imagine i am uh, like i was studying in the faculty of arts i told them that i have cyber security as one of my subjects four units they were trying to sell me professional year in it but they were like yeah get do professional year you would get 5 points towards your pr i mean it would not make sense they would not accept it because it's not related to my course why should i do that why should i spend so much money behind a professional year it's expensive it's 14000 I don't need that and I need people to tell me that I no don't need that don't do it but they sell you anything or everything they can just so that they can make money so my suggestion if you really need guidance or help I like go for if you are in India go for British council or IDP or if you are in Australia go to to towards a certified immigration lawyer they will charge you more money but they know what they are doing and what they are saying what the laws are and what you have to do to be legally staying in australia or whatever your situation is they will guide you the best that money is worth it don't don't hesitate towards that don't go, especially don't go for people who are offering free consultation so if you still choose the study pathway you will need to get your skill assessed after finishing uh which is another drama at another level every skill assessing authority has their own rules so skill assessment is basically uh making sure that what you have studied is equivalent to the australian qualification level um and in my case i had to get skill assessment from vetassess and this is the funny part in order to get your skill assessed you need to have uh, a a highly relevant qualification a bachelor's or a master's degree and one year post qualification work experience which is not a requirement from department of home affairs to be eligible for pr but west vet has requested this which i find is totally twisted because if the immigration doesn't require it why do you require it it doesn't make sense if i have studied something you just need you just assess it whether it is equivalent to the australian level different skill assessment authority have different rules and if you can't get your skill assessed you cannot apply for pr uh also studying in australia only gives you five extra points towards your pr application skill assessment nominating occupation after this there is one more requirement which is the mandatory requirement of having adequate english competency english language competency so you have to appear for ielts or pte testing which are two different types of testing bodies who assess your skill english language and guess what your ielts pte results are only valid for 2 years which does not make sense according to them i would forget how to speak read write or listen english in 2 years this is so dumb actually it's not dumb it's a money making process these tests are not cheap like you end up spending 3 to 400 dollars every time you appear for the tests for every 2 years and i mean imagine for every visa you're applying which is like 2 years 
later or something you have to appear for an english test because it is a mandatory requirement for every single visa it is just so annoying that you end up spending so much money behind this if i'm spending 300 dollars on a test i would at least expect a validity of five years if not more my appliances have more warranty than that the government has reduced the immigration cap drastically over the last few years the current annual cap for 2021 to 2022 is 160,000 applicants and this cap was reduced from 190,000 places to 160,000 and um, although the numbers have increased in the skilled occupation category a little more but the annual cap is still the same these are the current numbers from from the latest budget and it's still not enough there it, there are so many people waiting in the pool to be up to be invited to apply and it's just insane how they have opened applications for offshore i mean what i think ideally would should have happened that the onshore and offshore applications should be separated out but now everyone is in the same kind of pool and a lot more people from offshore are getting invites which i i have no problem about like i'm so happy if you are sitting offshore and you are getting an invite to get a pr in australia but what i'm saying is coming here as a student and then just waiting years and years to be invited at least is just frustrating and then you get into the competition with people with more experience from offshore who have not spent any money onshore we have paid taxes we have stayed here we have spent money on australia towards australian economy and we don't get any leverage so that's the bad part okay last but not the least getting a pr in australia is a super duper expensive process i have shelled out at least ten thousand dollars towards visas agent fees insurances uh, formalities assessments medicals what not um, so if you do plan to come here uh, taking and taking the study route to come here i would ask you to think twice before doing so because you'll end up shelling out so much money and paying massive taxes putting your skills to use but would cry for for a pr and it's just not me there are plenty of people who are still in this situation who are planning to move back because it's just not happening here unless your pr points are more than 85 that also depends on the kind of occupation you are applying for then you might have a chance of getting a pr but it's not it's not guaranteed and it's a long and expensive process maybe the immigration land, the landscape will change maybe not you can never trust the australian immigration policy makers they are they change stuff like that overnight and there will be no intimation before it happens and i'm not saying that australia is a bad country it's the most amazing place to live with the kindest of people but don't base your decision without doing your own research and don't rely just on uh, immigration agents consider everything uh, take all the things that i told you into consideration before making the big And so time for some tips that I promised to give you at the end of the video. So if you really want to get a PR in Australia and if you haven't chosen your college or if you want to like choose a college or a university to come here, consider moving to regional areas. Leave out Sydney and Melbourne. They are of no use. Move to Australian regional areas like Adelaide, uh, Perth, Gold Coast, Queensland or Wollongong, Central Coast, places that are outside of the main cities because there is a visa called 491 which is also a provisional permanent residency visa which offers residency to those who are living in like these regional areas so it's easier to get a pr in those places than the main cities so if uh, and you also get extra points for studying and staying in regional and you also get three years uh post-study work visa if you stay in places that are not sydney and melbourne basically regional areas if you are actually really keep really really want to come here and stay here that's the place you should go to also i recently got to know that india might be coming into uh, the list of working holiday visas so that is a great option if i had that i would have 
definitely definitely taken it so working holiday visa allows you to holiday in australia and work for 20 hours so working holiday visa is a great way to experience a new country and move to a new country because i know a lot of people who who were like british nationals or uh, people from europe come here on working holiday visas and just try to stay permanently it's a great way it's definitely a great way to proceed to move to another country so that was all for today that is this is the end of the video i do have a lot more stuff coming out coming up for you guys and uh as to what am i doing what's happening with my pr or australian pr that i will tell you in my next video there's a big big news coming up for you guys and you will be shocked honestly i know you will be but hang on there wait for my next video i'll tell you all about it there's so much stuff that i want to share with you guys yeah. but for bye for now if you haven't followed me or subscribed to my channel hit the subscribe button i'll show you all about australia and share about my life updates and if you want you can also follow me on instagram bye bye